All right. So we are holding in Perek Tet Pasuk Pasuk Dalit, right? Yeah. We had this uh, amazing introduction of the Bechira of the free will and the Ashgacha of Hakadosh Baruch and how Hakadosh Baruch interacts with us. And the outlook, the outlook that the tzaddik, that the righteous, that the chacham needs to have in order of, of the mundane, the mundane lifestyle, in order for him to protect himself from the impact and the influence of the mass of the majority of people that are so shallow and end up being so so futile and so empty and make them really at the end bad good that was uh that was uh intellectual okay basically whoever is connected what does that mean connected whoever is in touch says the sono with its senses with its instinct there is an echo. I'm sorry? There's echo. Ah, yeah, there's an echo from someone, yeah. Sorry. So whoever, whoever is connected, is, meaning he's in touch with his, uh, his, uh, his time, with his senses, with life, with his instinct, whoever is, is really, is fully aware of what's happening in his life, and this is just amazing because this word Yehubah says the Sono is a person that understands the power of senses, the power of instinct, the importance of time, the the the, uh, the health, all those different uh, aspects of life, right? Four aspects. El kol haim yesh bitachon. He finds security and self-confidence in everything he does in life. So when is a person losing bitachon, losing trust in the outcome of life or of his efforts or in the outcome of, or, or in, in himself is when the person is not in touch with these four facets or four pillars of his essence. Time, senses, instinct, and health. If says says the the says Shoma Melech, if you're in touch with it, and that's the intellect, the awareness comes from the brain. If the brain creates this awareness on those four pillars, El Kol Hachayim Yesh Bitachon, not El Hachayim, not in life, in all the life, in his all life entirely, he will always find the strength. And the confidence to tackle and 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 deal with every situation. Uh, this is amazing. Meaning, you know, we have Shara Bitachon. We have a lot of books written on Bitachon. And here, the the Shlomo Melech, according to the Sfono, with one word, he gives you the secret across the board in your life to have Bitachon. And what is Bitachon? Bitachon is confidence. When you have confidence, you're not scared. When you have confidence, you're not doubtful. When you have confidence, you're proactive. When you have confidence, you engage, you grow, you develop. When you don't have the confidence, all the opposite of the above. And here he brings an, a, 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 like, a, almost like a dramatic example. Ki le kelev hai hutob. A dog that's alive and says a small no, what does it mean that's alive? That knows that it's alive and that it has the instinct, the instinct of survival of life. Who told? He's good. He has, he has what he needs. Mina Arie Hamed is much in a much better place than the Arie, than the lion that's so that's imposing fear, that's so powerful, but he's dead. Shlomo Amer tells us, it, it doesn't, if you're an Aryeh, if you're a lion, 
but you're dead inside, it's worthless. It's worthless. There's nothing that's going to come out. You better be a dog and alive than being a, a lion but de and dead. So the take, the take I, I think Shlomo Amelech goes from a very, very big concept to a very strange example. Huh? The example, if you think about it, Shlomo Amelech's example is very strange. Like he's almost comparing us to a, a caliph, to a, like a dog. Better be a dog that, a lion than a dead lion. What he's coming to say is that you're better off starting very low, but creating this life, having life, being alive, being, being sensitive, being aware, being instinctive to life, right? Having this, this, um, um, the the the, the Kadosh calls, calls calls it a um, um, in Hebrew he calls it koach akiyumi the instinct of survival. If you understand, you're better off having a, a a low instinct of survival with awareness than having all the strength and being lost. Because what's the point of being a lion with all this power if you're dead, right? If there's no awareness, if you don't have the chacham, you don't have the chokmah, you're, you you're not using it properly, what's the point of, of all this strength? And, and, and Shlomo Alech already addressed life versus death of the person being uh, walking uh, like a dead person. The ones that are alive, they know that at the end they're going to die. And so what? Well, hold on one second. But the dead ones, they don't know anything. What does that mean? The people that are dead inside, they don't understand that the time will come that it's going to end. They're just they're down, uh, down on, on, on cruise control. And the GPS takes them whatever they want. They're dead inside. So these people, they have no, they, they have no, they have no um, sense of urgency for them to be caring of the impact of their potential and of the value of their time and their life. They're dead. And so, and because of that, there's no, there's no real reward. There's no real outcome. Nothing's going to come out of this. They are completely forgotten. They don't leave. The zecher is the, 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 the memory. Whatever they've done, which is the definite, what is memory? Memory is a, the, rec the record of the data of any actions you've made in the past. That's memory. Nishkach is, is, is like erased. Everything that they've done disappears, completely disappears. And let's keep in, let's keep in mind, this is the, this is the, 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 the outlook of, in, in, the, in Shlomo HaMelech, according to our Shita, right? Our Shita in Ashgacha. And then he goes more dramatic about the people that are not alive. What does he say? Gam Ahavatam, their love, et sinat, Gam Sinatam, their hate, Gam Kinatam, their jealousy, Kvar Avada, will all dissipate completely. And they are no longer a part of this world. You're given an opportunity to be part of the world. But if the world swallows you, you lost your part. You're not playing your role. So you're no longer an owner of a chenek, of a part of the, of, of, of the world. 
The only reason you have, it, or the only way you can actually own a part of this world is if you are proactive and creative and impactful. Obviously, for all the effort and all that has been done under the sun. Shuma Melech is, is being extremely, extremely explicit in the importance to feel alive. In the importance to be sensitive to it's and it's at the end it's, it's what what is it it's awareness awareness of time and value of time awareness of life and awareness of space and that's all it takes that's all it takes in order for you to be alive like the problem is that we, we and, 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 and this we learned from, from, the, from his mashal that he said earlier, from his example of being like, better to be a, a dog alive than a dead, a dead lion. What, what is, what are we, what are we picking up from that? That at, at the end, at the end of the day, a caliph doesn't, it's not, it's not an animal that's sophisticated. It's not a, that it doesn't have kavod. It doesn't have too much respect. It doesn't, it's a it's even a pejorative. Uh, uh, association. But the Kelev, the Kelev is something that is very low, but also very attainable. Today, dogs cost a lot of money, I think. In the time, <laughs> Didn't cost nothing, right? So our Melech basically says, instead of, of trying to reach for the moon, out of, because you want to be the Aryeh, be out of your ego, to be powerful, to be majestuous, to be recognized, to be feared, and at the end, end up being dead, because you're not going to accomplish it, Understand that it's so attainable. It's actually it's at the tip of your fingers. It's so accessible. And then you can be alive. So it starts, and it's amazing how the awareness you need to have, you know, Islam is not saying you have to be aware of the Mahasebereshit of the creation. Or aware of, of the Mazalot and the Galgalim and, and the Malachim and all these things. It's a simple thing. Be aware of your value of time. Be aware of your senses, what your senses can re are receptors to. Be aware of your health, the importance of your health. Be aware of your instincts. The second you have this awareness, everything that he says after, is no longer, is no longer uh, applicable. And the opposite, then your love is a vibrant energy forever. Your hate, and we, what did, what we explain, what is love and hate? Love and hate is what you build closer, your, your unity, right? Ahava, gematria, echad, versus sin'a, which is to push back, things you push away. Meaning suddenly you built a culture, what's important to be close to, what's not important to, get, to be close to, what you have to be far away from. You build a culture and suddenly, yes, your children, your grandchildren, the, your, your students, the people that respect you, even if the person is no longer here. But the Ahava stays forever. The Sina stays forever. The actions are remembered. We, when we talk about legacy and we talk, okay, so how do I, what, you know, the Shem Tov that we're trying to, uh, to, uh, to keep, this Shem Tov, is, this is how you build it. You want to build a Shem Tov? This is how you do it. Chai. Chai. Mehuba. Connected. 
You're connected, you're alive. You're alive, all of you are gone. Yes. So is this saying that uh, it's better to, um, I'll start with the other side. It, it, the people that go to shul three times a day and, you know, they're just on autopilot. They're not really connecting, but they do it just because that's how they grew up or, or you know, they go to a class here and there, but really they're just on autopilot. They don't really put anything into it, right? Is it, is it saying that it's better to understand it more and, and connect more and do less? Uh, no, like, are you are you better off that it's, way? It's 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 no, what, what, no. You, you, you it's none. It, you, it's not your choice to make to do less or do more. If we're being very factual, okay. But it's your choice to decide what you take out of these actions. Meaning, the action is an action, and we have to do it because it's it's a mitzvah of the Torah. Hashem expects us to do that, right? However, however, instead of thinking you can become this big, uh, you know, this very knowledgeable guy, and at the end, you, don't, you know, you want to know everything, but you don't know nothing. Yes, you're right. Better off zooming in into something, understanding it, mastering it, and then move to the next. But it's, it's, it's what Shlomo Amenech is teaching us is, is more, it's deeper than that is more fundamental and yet more basic than that. It's pashut, it's simple awareness. You know what it means to be, uh, what, you know what's the definition of, of awareness? Is to care. To care. If you care, ah, if you tell me about what? About everything. Echpatiyut. Echpat lecha. If you have erech, you know, Rav Yerucha Malevi has a beautiful Hidush. He says, he says people think that value, something that's valuable, is the, it's something that's defined by demand. The more demand there is for something and the more valuable it is. The more people want to buy gold, right? That's the name of the game of the Nasdaq, of the stock market. Most of everything, the mice. But it says Rabbi Yochamel an amazing chidush. He said it's not true. He said this is not erech. This is not real value. What, you know what? Value is a midah. Value is, 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 a, is a trait. If you have it, you will value everything. But if you have zizul, meaning you have a midah, a trait of disregarding, of not caring, of... of you know, of not, not, of not value, right? Of, of devalue. Then that is also a trait that you, that might grow into a person to then be able to use it in different aspects of his life. And I'll explain, I'll give you an example to what I'm saying. But did you have that with me, with me? When I moved to, when I moved to New York, before, I, before we moved. So we came with my wife to look at different schools for the kids. Some of the schools alone, they said, you know, by us, obviously, you know, I went to yeshivot, you know, proper yeshivot. They said, we had to say, I think three, uh, three schools for my daughter. Two out of three schools told me, us, What's important, important for us is Yirat Shamayim. Limude Kodesh, Yirat Shamayim. We, we, we close an eye on, on, on secular studies. That's not really what, what's in, important to us. Okay. And the third school said, listen, by us, secular is as important as, as, uh, as, uh, as religious. We're extremely, extremely um, competitive on both. So we're just letting you know, okay? Mo mo a little bit more modern school, still very religious, but more modern than the other two. I come back to Israel and I go see my Rav, Zeret Sadiku Kadosh Livracha, Rav Moshe Shapira. And I tell him, listen, I have a big question to ask. On one end, there's those great religious schools and all the focus is on, 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 on Torah, Yerat Shamayim, 
but uh, you know they, they, they couldn't care less about uh, the, the, the secular state. The other one, uh, families are not, are, again, they're very religious and everything is relative, but they're not as religious, uh, maybe a little bit more modern, but very competitive on both. What should I choose? So he said, what do you have in mind? So I told him, I said, you know, I told him this Rabbi Rucham. Rabbi Rucham says that, you know, the air, the value is a midah, it's a trait. And the ir patiyut and the zilzul to, de, to, to belittle something, not to care, is also a midah. When you say, I don't care, who cares? The, when you say, who cares, that's also a trait, said Rabbi Rucham. So I said, I'm worried that, you know, if she goes to a school where we teach her it's okay not to care, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Maybe one day she's going to use that don't worry about it something somewhere else in life. That was, that was the thing. Because you teach a child to say, I don't care. Now, how do we know, how can we control in 20 years from now, the who cares, or I drop out, or it's not important, won't be used in, 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 in the, the child's Shalom Bayit. How do you know it's not going to be used in his work or in his Torah? Today, it's secular studies because it's not important. But that's not the problem. The problem is the message you're conveying when you say it's okay to say I don't care. This is the problem. It's a tabach gadol, gadol, gadol meod, gadol meod. That's for you, Stephen. You understand? So, so when, when, when you want to be too high or you want to do too much, then along the way, you're going to say on certain things, ah, who cares about that? It's okay. It's okay. It's not complete. It's okay. It's not great. It's okay. It's not perfect. It's okay. Now, nobody says that you have to be stuck in perfection, but you have to care. As long as you care, it's fine. And if you care, you're aware. This is the definition of awareness, caring. So care, you're going to care about everything. You're going to care about structure. You're going to care about being neat. You're going to care about relationship. You're going to care about your work. You're going to care about the outcome of your work. You're going to care about your health. You're going to care about your relationship, about being sensitive. You just care. If you care, you care. But if you're selective about what you care, you also don't care. And that don't care feeling will one day haunt you and push you to destroy something you could have saved. Beautiful. Drop out, don't Amazing. exist. Amazing. Drop out, do not exist. They don't exist. It doesn't happen. My, 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 my first mashgiach, Rabbi David El Alouf, was exposed, big, big mashgiach, in my, the first yeshiva I went to Eretz Israel. He's a student of Rav Volbe, who's a student of Rabbi Yerucham Alevi that we just brought. So it's the same, it's the same uh, school of thought, the same teachings, all the way to the Gaon Midilna. He was exposed to a situation, to a situation in, uh, in Chinuch, in education. You have a boy, you bring him into the yeshiva, and the boy is struggling. And he's not... Uh... Can you throw him out of the, of the yeshiva or not? He's not at this time. You can... So the Rosh Hashiva said, throw him, that's it. Why should, I, why should I sponsor a boy that's not at the level and he's bothering everybody, throw him out. The Rosh Hashiva said, no, nobody's touching him. The Majgiyaf, Rabbi David, he said, he's, he's under my supervision. Because once you take the responsibility of a boy, his life is in your hands. And this comes from the Midah of caring. It's not about what's convenient. It's not about what's, what's productive. It's about caring. Now, in business, again, in business, yes, you have to make business decisions, okay? That's called caring about your business and the outcome of your business. But you need to care. Do ne not ever, ever, ever allow yourself to grow this contamination that is called, who cares? Not, not in you and not in your children. When a child, you know, my son, my son, when he was a, when he was a little kid, Mordechai, I find him, maybe, I don't know, he was three, four years old. He takes pencil, he breaks it. I told you, he take pencil, breaks it. 
I said, what? He says, it's on your pencil, who cares? Ah, I said, who cares? No problem. I said, this is the broken pencil that you're going to use it. That's all you have. That's all you have. And then we'll, we'll, we'll talk again when, when, when you cannot use it anymore. Until he realized, what is the value of half a pencil? Wow. And the problem is that we're, now we're going to say, what are you going to tell me? Rabbi, why are you so cheap? A pencil. Come on, 25 cents. It's not about the 25 cents. It's about the, I, who cares? It's only a pencil. I, w- I, was, I was in a, and it's important. I'm saying those stories because it's different facets, but to understand that this is the fundamental of being alive. The, the smallest details matters, matters to your children's future. Absolutely. Absolutely. Incredible. Absolutely. I'm going to give you another, another, I was in a, 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 another a, 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 a situation I was in. I was still a Bacho. I was in Yeshiva and uh, I was asked to go to, uh, to London for a Shidduch. For a Shidduch. Okay. And I stayed in the house of Rav Gurevich, who's uh, the brother of the Rosh Yeshiva of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Gateshead. Big, big, big Tamit Chacham, huge Tamit Chacham. I mean, his house. And as I arrive, you know, Bachur, eh, they, they host me. So the, 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 the Rabbanit comes and uh, gives me a, a, a fresh drink in a, in a cup of plastic. Good? I'm 18 years old, 19 years old. Very good. I drink and I talk to the rabbi. And then uh, as a good boy, you know, you, uh, you clean up after your mess, right? So I finish drinking, I take the plate home, and I say, I'm sorry, where's the, the garbage? I want to throw the cup. I say, what would you throw a cup? I say, put it in the, in the sink. I say, ah, okay, I, and I don't understand. And she looks at me, she says, uh, Mr. Moyal. She tells me. <laughs> she said, Mr. Moyal, after you drink from that cup, that's not a cup anymore? I said, yeah, but it's, I mean, it's a plastic cup, you throw it. He said, so what? You clean it. It's a cup again. So just because you, because you can throw it, that means it's not a cup. It's a cup. I did not throw out this cup now. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 one second. So, <laughs> uh, parenthesis of, uh, of, uh, of, you know. I'm to, kidding. Uh, to, to bring a little uh, humor to it. So I was, <laughs> I was, I was by my in-laws. <clears throat> the beginning, beginning of, 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 the, of the wedding. And I tried to show off. So I said, I'm not going to throw the cup. You know, I learned a big lesson, right? You don't throw the cup. So, 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 so there's a cup of plastic. And, uh, and I, t- I tell my mother, you know, I said, you know, I'm going to clean the cup. How about this cup? She told me, Ma, are you crazy? The water that you spend and the soap that you spend to us is more expensive than the actual cup. Throw the cup. <laughs> uh, good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> but you see, the, the, you, you, have it, you, have, you have situations where... But, at the end of the day, for one, the, what my, what's important is not to waste. And the other one is why should you throw a cup out of the cup? The, the message is the same. They both care. If you, if you care, you care. If you care, you care. So the, the, biggest, the biggest threat to life, to the chai of a person is being careless. Rob, I heard a great chidush uh, the other day about the, um, is it the chasida, the bird that's called the chasida? Yes, 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 yes. I thought it was so beautiful. It was, it was, it was just saying, I mean, maybe you could share because you know better. No, no, but how about, but how about, it's your chidush, please. No, I just, I, I heard that, you know, it says we don't eat birds because they're predators. And then it asks the question, well, why don't we eat the chasida? It says the chasida is so good. <laughs> And, yep. and it and it treats it treats it so well, but it says no. It only it's treats it, it's 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 very That's close it. circle very well. Everyone else it doesn't care about. It only cares That's about it. the birds that are their kind of bird. Everyone else it says go fly a kite. So <laughs> which you know, which kind I, of bird I, I, is a chasida? It's the slusini. Uh, I don't know how you call it. Uh, you, you call the chasida in English the white bird chasida, very majestuous. Dove, the dove? Not the dove. Not the dove. No, no. Crane? I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to say it in English. Michila. My English didn't get, didn't, didn't get to that level yet. <laughs> I just, I thought it was so beautiful about personal relationships, yes. you oh, know? Okay. 
And I say, you know, it's so true. How many times do we say, oh, I'm so good to my friends or I'm so good to my family. But if you're not good to everyone, it's, it's worthless. Definitely. It's a stork, a stork. You have to be good, not just good by, for. Not good by choice, selective That's right. friends. That's right. That's right. Let's continue. Pasuk Zayn. So now that we have addressed this importance of being alive and the fear on not being alive and the outcome on both sides. Go enjoy your bread. Enjoy the fact that you can eat and you can eat bread. And drink. And then enjoy your wine. Because Hashem already accepted your actions. What does that mean? If you're aware, you are in sync with Elohim. You are in sync with the dynamic of life. And your actions are accepted. Your actions are in harmony. But it starts with what? With the simha of, of enjoying a loaf of bread. The simha of drinking a cup of wine. Of making you happy. Bechol et yu begadecha levanim. Pasuk chet. Your clothes should always be, try to always have your clothes white. Veshemen al roshcha al ihsa. And it's like, if you do that, you will never lack oil on your head. Seshlova melech. Now, the simcha yeah. is that because you just being alive, you have to have simcha. You eat something, you're alive, you, you'll be happy. Nahon, but is, is, once, which, yes, what Shlomo Melech is, is, again, is going to the lowest level possible of awareness. Okay? The basic, the basic is bread. Okay? If you're, if you're alive, if you're alive, you're going to enjoy the loaf of, uh, the loaf of bread. You're going to enjoy the cup of wine. And he says, And if you're aware and in tune with your life, then you will make sure to always wear clean and white clothes. What does that mean? You will always be in touch with the, your actions, not to, just, not to make your clothes dirty, make your actions dirty, not to dirty your neshama. And the wisdom, shemen is the oil. Oil, it represents wisdom, right? The oil that we put in the menorah, which represents the chokhmah, will not be missed. Because if you care, and you're aware, and you're alive inside, you care of your actions, you care to grow intellectually, you care to learn, to progress. Good? So, not only we start from, okay, so we start from Chayim, from being Chayim, being alive. What it takes to be alive, the awareness that gives you the ability to appreciate the most simple and enjoy the, 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 the value, the, the important things, the, the Yayim. You're in tune with, with, with the world and you're in tune with Hashem, right? Hashem accepts your actions. You're in tune with life and with Hashem in the world. Um, next, you're going to be sensitive to your actions, not to, not to sin. You're going to be sensitive to grow intellectually. Next, look, the one that's alive. What is life? It's when you are with the wife that you love all your life. All that mundane life that's in front of, that's next, that you're facing, that you have no choice but to face, going back to the beginning of the Perek, the Ra, the bad, the waste of time, the waste of time from growing that you have to invest for, for your, 
for the mundanity that is imposed upon you in life. Appreciate it. Make you, you, he says, look, life is when you have the one that's you, that you love by your side all your life. Gave you under the sun. Why? This is your chelek. This is what you were given. This is your chelek of life. Your chelek, what did we say? We say that the dead doesn't have chelek, right? He doesn't have a chelek. Why? Because he didn't create anything. A chelek, a portion, is what you, what you do with it. The impact. But if you have life, if you're alive, that, that, that capsule that he gave you is now your chalik. Enjoyment, having your wife, the beloved one next to you. You're, you're one with your judgment, the Isha. You will enjoy and appreciate the toiling, your efforts that you will do under the, under the sun. Meaning, and here the amal is the amal that doesn't have real benefits. It's limited benefits, the benefits of uh, the physical world. Even that, okay, you will un- end up benefiting from. Pasuk Yud, Kol Hashem says, when you're alive, all the actions, all the opportunities that come along your way. Make sure to take advantage and do it. Be proactive. Do not waste time. Every opportunity that's given is a new chance. Every action that you make is a new impact. Because he says, be careful. There's no action. There's no thought process. The da'at ve There's no value to the da'at or to the chokhmah. Bish ola yesharata olech shama. Where after 120 years, where you're going, none of this matters. None of this will have any more value. Shlomo Melech is going full force right now to express the benefits. And the, 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 the pleasure of awareness, basic awareness. Mm. And he says, and he says, because at the end, that's it, khalas. Once we leave this world, no chokhmah, no heshbon, no actions, no da'at, nothing, finish. Nothing, no, nothing goes there. Rob, does he talk about how to increase your awareness? I think, I think that it's everything that he said right now, okay, is a snowball effect. You create, the, way, the only way to increase your awareness is by being aware. And the more you're aware, the more you're aware. The more you're aware, the more you're aware. Okay. The basic, the basic, according to Rabbi Yerucham, if you want to develop awareness, is five times a day, do an action with full awareness. And, and five times a day. Random action, doesn't matter. But you're being aware of what you're doing at that moment. It's not instinctive. It's not reactive. It's not a robotic. I understand. I love, I love those takeaways. You know, the practical takeaways. It's like... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, me too. Listen, what, what, what Shlomo Menech is, is saying right now, it's spectacular. He said, it's, he gave us the, the download step by step. Step by step. How? Again, you're aware, <laughs> you, go, you go from being aware to be able of the basics, huh? being aware, awareness of what? 
caring about what? Four things, says Sofo, the Sfono. The senses, the instinct, time, and health. That's it. You have those awareness of those four things, and the awareness comes from the Chukma. Suddenly. And space? Yes. No, what do you mean space? Senses, just, instinct, time, uh, and health. If you have that, you're going to appreciate the simplest thing. You're going to be happy eating bread. You're not just going to appreciate. You're going to be happy. Happy. You know, what's the definition of happy versus being content or being satisfied? You're happy. You work very hard and you end up doing a deal and the deal works out and you, you, ah, and you sign. Ah, you job, you're super happy, right? You're happy. So you're going to be happy like this when you eat bread. Wow. This so, is what you can, this is the level of happiness you can develop. By the way, this is the biggest, the biggest success and accomplishment. Think about it. If you can have this level of happiness when you wake up in the morning and you have a piece of bread in, on, on your table, you're always happy. And then you appreciate this, and you have a good heart and you appreciate also fine things like wine. So not only that you're happy about the simple things, but you also, you have your heart appreciates very refined things. You're in tune with life. You're careful about your actions. You're, you are engaging intellectually. You keep the close one, the, the, your loved one close to you. You, appreciate, you, you enjoy your toiling even the, for the toiling of things that are mundane. And the most important, when with this, he seals the process, you do not waste one opportunity. Every opportunity is the opportunity. I love Why? it. Why? Because you understand that at the end of the life, none of these kohot that you think that you have, none of these opportunities or potential that you think you have will help you in any way. Finish, khalas. Everything matters. Everything matters. It's one message across the board. One message across the board. That's so true. Right, the Such same way you said, basic message, huh? the same way you said, if, if you think something doesn't apply to you when you're learning Torah, or if, if you're learning about Edut or Sanedin or whatever, you never know when you're going to use this. So just follow right. everything yeah. because everything matters. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. This is, this is a message we need to enter. Huh? It's, it's amazing. I love this message. <laughs> Rob, you know the story of the backup quarterback behind Tom Brady? Who's Tom Brady? <laughs> Football, player. Football player. I'm okay. going to tell, tell you the story quickly. Tom Brady is probably the best quarterback of all time in NFL history. Okay? Gamze okay. Hevel, but the message What's is the good. Quarterback? When, when, when was he? In which time? He's still, he's still playing. He's still playing. Oh, okay. Okay. There was a guy that was his backup, the guy behind him. He sat on the bench, but he was his backup. His name was Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay. And and doesn't matter, heavy. But but every his mentality was is he went to practice every day like it was the Super Bowl, like it was the most important day ever. He literally played four games where he started the quarterback because the guy was injured. He got a hundred million dollar contract. Because all he did was practice perfectly. That's all he did. He just took everything seriously. He took everything like it was his most important thing. And he got a $100 million contract just because of that attitude. Where, where, where do I sign? I know. 
me too. Me too. Uh, you have me much too. more than that. Babu Hashem, much, much more. This is a... This much, is much a, more. This is a change. Change when after, this after is a change. Yes. So, Chazak, uh, we're going to stop here. The, the next Isha, I, said I, have I can't wait to share this with my wife. Yes, yes. But no, but it's... it's you know, it's, it's amazing because... You know, like, look, look where it gets. You want Shalom Bayit? Awareness. And think about it. If you're aware, you have Shalom Bayit because you're going to be aware of what your wife likes, she doesn't like, what, yeah. you know, not to press her buttons, how to, how to go around certain things. Beautiful. I was in the photos. So, uh, thank you so much. I'm sorry for that. Uh, it was a little Thank you, Rav. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Drive safe. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you.